sessions out in the lobby, but please, please, please don't bring them in to the auditorium. Um, a reminder that if you have a program and you don't want to keep it, there's boxes in the back of the house on the way out, at the end of the show, where you can return them. Uh, no pictures with flash, please, as courtesy to crew and our lovely actors. And finally, please silence your cell phones before we begin the show, as to not disturb the part of the progress. All right. On this note, please enjoy the white snake. Change your shape, 
You are a skilled warrior. The immortals are all proud of you. And yet, you have not transcended. Have you not wondered why and why you are still so restless? I assume, Lady Bodhisattva, that your poor servant has not yet had the patience or the skill. That is not it. Let me tell you this. Before you were reborn on this mountain, many reincarnations ago, you were just a little snake in the mortal world, in the red dust. I was? One day, you were caught by a poor man on the side of the road. He was just about to cut you in half and take your gall. Oh no! When a timber merchant came by, when he saw what was about to happen, his heart was moved. Why and... is that? What? Why was the merchant's heart moved by a snake? I thought that humans abhor a snake. No one can say. There are a few things so unsteady as those hearts of men. I see. Forgive my interruption. What happened then? He bought you from the poor man for a hundred copper coins and set you free. That is why you have been able to practice self-cultivation to this day. The good deed of the timber merchant passed into you and made you something special. But now, you must repay this favor. It is the only way to gain your final merit. Fortunately for you, the timber merchant has been reborn in the city of Hangzhou, and his name is Xu Xin. Go there and serve this man as he once served you, and then you may at last join the ranks of the immortals. This is how one version goes. Others say it was not the Bodhisattva or White Snake met upon that moonlit night, that she never met the Bodhisattva or heard about her past life with Xu Xin at all. But she met someone else that night, an old acquaintance. Ah! Uh, snake! Uh, ha! Ha! Uh, ha! How to reconcile the two versions of this story? Let us agree. The white snake only met the Bodhisattva in a dream. A dream she then forgot, but we should remember. Green snake, how are you at work? White snake, how happy I am to see you. How embarrassed that you should see me fell at the sword dance. You're an accomplished performer, but perhaps you can learn to be a little steadier. I'll say. It's only because you're in touch with nature. When your self motivation has reached a higher level, I'm sure that everything will be alright. Oh, I hope. Can you stay? I hope you have forgiven me. Forgiven you for what, my lady? In our contest of the magic arts. Oh, forget about it. It's right that I should have lost, and that me too. You have practiced so much longer than I, and so much harder. You've reached perfection. Dear friend, you flatter me. I have hundreds of years more to go before I reach your level. But I'm afraid I'll never get there. I have no patience. But what brings you out tonight? Usually you're serenely meditating at the full moon. I felt a little restless. I do resist all the time. You know, on this dreary mountain, there's no one to tell me at all. Crazy snake. I can't help it. On this, down below, everything is so exciting. Yes, I've heard and read about it too, but that's just not for us. There's music, fine food, and wine, and all sorts of people and commerce and beautiful sights to see. Don't you wonder sometimes what it is like? Sometimes I don't even want to be a boy at all. I just want to give it all up and get away from here. Abandon myself to the worldly pleasures. Oh, Green Snake, you shouldn't. Have you never felt the same? Well, not even a little? A little bit? Or you're very self involved. No, dear friend, I confess, in spite of my thousand years of cultivating the way, I do feel restless sometimes. Even tonight, that's why I came out. That's right, dear friend. Let you and I go down the mountain. Oh, no! Just for one day, a single day, there will be no harm, and it's springtime. You should see the world and then come right back up. No! It would be better before anyone on this old mountain visits us. And don't you think it's part of our cultivation to know the world that we are renouncing? We should know that. <laughs> you think so? I know it. Let's go down the mountain in disguise, you as my lady, and I as your man. What do you say? Only for one day. 
and my mother died of grief, of course. I have my own companion, Amy, here to protect me from utter desolation. Blue Bellow Gate, straight ahead. Oh, here we are. And what a coincidence. The rain has stopped. How beautiful the lake is after the rain. Don't you think? Like a poem. Yes, it is. Oh, well, I'm afraid I must be going. Oh, madam, I'm afraid it might rain again and we'll be without protection. Don't you hear it? Hear it in the distance? And we must be going also. I'll take my umbrella. Won't you need it yourself? Oh, no. I'm nearly home. Please. But how could we return it? Maybe you could come to our house to batch it. Where do you live? Near, dear. The rat house on the corner. I'll come tomorrow, then. All right, then. Sir, we must be getting along. Uh, uh, until tomorrow. Until tomorrow. He departed into the mist, and our servants looked away also. Although Xu Xian was soaked to the bone, he had no regrets. Good evening, little brother. Sister, honored brother-in-law. Look at you dragging in all that water. Where have you been all day? Uh, uh, I, I went to visit my parents' graves and uh, sweep them. All day? Husband! All day it took you to sweep the graves? Well, it was a beautiful day and... You call that squall that came out beautiful? Husband! You left your sister here with all the housework. He worked so hard at the pharmacy. I apologize for my thoughtlessness. No need. Not enough sense to come in out of that rain. Hey. 
it, 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 it certainly is such a, a, a lovely house. Greetings. Let's bring some snacks for Master Shoes so that we may show our gratitude to Oh, you. please, I beg of you, don't go to any trouble on my account. I, I do not deserve, nor can I repay such a uh, hospitality. I really must be going. Oh, sir, you must reconsider. Uh, there are our acquaintance now of long standing. It was sure the Dame Fortune would decree that we shared your bow in the ring yesterday. It would have been devastating to my feelings if you had refused. Your kindness overwhelms me. Uh, don't mention it, sir. <laughs> Please, Jimmy, I must be going. Give my apologies. <laughs> 
have something to tell you, my lady. Oh, don't you? Ah, uh, yes, I do. Miss, I wish to spend a lifetime of happiness together with you. I pray you will not refuse me. I think it's an actual idea. And further, I wish that we do not delay, but conduct the ceremony now, this very night. You have spoken my whole heart's desire. Yes! <laughs>
make money, but what's more important is to treat the patients. Nonetheless, come up now and rest. Day after day, they lived in tender sunlight. Their happiness increased as word of the Bath of Pharmacy spread far and wide, but perhaps too far. As far as the Golden Monastery, here is how it happened. One day, three citizens met while offering incense. Now, this Golden Monastery was home of one Fahai. This man was far advanced in enlightenment. He could see the past and future, and was skilled in magic arts. But although he could recite scripture, he had a villainous heart. <laughs> Have you been to the new Baoha Pharmacy? No, why no? You should go right away. They can cure anything. An ailment. An ailment? 
Well, in that case, allow me to call on my wife to see you. <laughs> Why do you laugh, sir? Because it is not I who am sick, but you. It is I who have come to treat you. But, sir, as you can see, I am in robust health. I suffer from no illnesses. Not only you, but this whole shop is enveloped in an overwhelming miasma of sorcery. I can sense it miles away. Master Shu, your wife is not an herbalist. Indeed she is. She's not even a human being. What? <laughs> She's a snake spirit, sir. A snake who has managed to transform herself into the form of a woman. Right now she's coiled somewhere near. I sense it. She stood a dog from the mountain where she rightly belongs, right into your shop. Uh, uh, I'm speechless. Get rid of her, get rid of her at once or she will destroy you. Sir, I must ask you to curtail this nonsense. My wife is the most virtuous of women. I've never met someone so loving, so kind. If you won't listen to reason, I will be on my way. Yes. Only do this for me. On the day of the Dragon Ball Festival, serve your wife a cup of real good wine. What on earth for? You know what for. On that day, when they drink the wine, all creatures review their true form. Yeah, I'll uh, keep that in mind. <laughs> Why not? 
for? I'm looking forward to it. <laughs>
you were drunk. Yes, Joe Master Shirt, I'll say. Remember? It's true, I had some drinks, but I mean it was much. And besides, remember that nonsense that will monk put in your head? What nonsense is that, my lady? What monk? Oh, that old for high has been spreading rumors, saying that was a demon spear or something. <laughs> that was in your head. And remember what they say. Believing is seeing. Mahai. I confess I couldn't help but think of what he said. You're not part of cover, my dear. Listen to me. Swear to me that you would never have anything to do with the old monk again. I won't, I won't. You see what harm has caused ready. I do. And who knows what he can do in the future. Oh, I swear. Now come lie down. Thank heavens. I feel as if I've awoken from the longest night there. You have my love. And now I'm back. Back to the real world. Yes, you are. Life soon returned to normal at the Battle Boat Pharmacy, and the experiences of the day of the Dragon Boat Festival soon fell away from Shushin's mind, and the days of summer slipped like fish through a stream. Soon the air was clean and the blue sky was sharp against the yellow leaves of autumn. One day Shushin went to settle an account. On his way home, he was wandering by the river. Whoa, Master Shushin! Oh, Sir Abbot, hello! Forgive me, but I have no time to visit. I must be getting. Ah, just one word. I'm so sorry. I really have no time. In the name of Buddha. Very well. May I inquire what happened the day of the Dragonboat Festival? Why, nothing, not one thing. Uh, nothing at all. It was a very nice festival. Did your wife drink the wine? She did, as a matter of fact. And? And she was absolutely fine. Forgive an old man, Master Shu, and let me make a man. Uh, it isn't necessary. I insist. I should be going. The view of the autumn leaves of Golden Monastery is something to behold, Master Shu. How long has it been since you've been out to visit us? It's been uh, quite some time, I confess. Why not come with me now? Let's go up the mountain. We'll burn incense together, have tea upon the terrace, Compose few verses on the view. I have heard you are fond of poetry. Why, yes, I am. I accept your invitation, but I can't stay long. No, no, we'll go up the mountain and be right back down again by the end of day. All right then. Shu Shin and Baha'i strolled together along the banks of the river, then took a boat to the other side. All while expounding verses and sometimes quoting scripture, Shu Shin felt flattered by the intentions of such a high ranking monk. Then they climbed the mountain, and at last they entered the gates of the Golden Monastery. Please prepare some vegetarian dishes for our guests. Oh, Sir Abbot, you really shouldn't go to any trouble for me. I really, I can't stay long. Oh my, that certainly is a view. The autumn leaves are touched by rays. Sir, you are married to a snake. <laughs> <laughs> you are coiled in the snare of a snake demon. What? I thought you said you were coming. That a servant of hers, the great lady, the lady? Stay! Sir, this is preposterous. I advise you to stop slandering virtuous young women. They are neither virtuous, nor young, nor woman. They are snake spirits who have spent hundreds of years to cut many magic powers. The two of them conspired to fool you after the festival. It was indeed your wife who discovered your sheet. But that green thing conjured the third one to fool you. I'm going. Your only hope is to convert. Convert? It is the only way to protect yourself. Is that what this is about? You want me to become a monk? You want me to abandon my home and family? Your family is nothing but a nest of violence. It is an unnatural alliance. If you do not leave them now, they shall soon be deprived of you in any case, for they will eat you. Well, I'm very grateful for your concern on my behalf, but I have no intention of leaving my family. It's uh, getting late, and I will be going. I'm afraid that won't be possible. The gates of the Golden Mountain are not tight. You cannot leave!
around. I wanted to speak to him about... He went to settle an account with a client. Oh, so <coughs> is the monastery now taking herbs? Is the what? Is the monastery now subscribing? Why? Not that I know of. Why do you say that? Oh, no reason. It's just that I saw Master Zhu walking with Abbot Bahai the other day. I thought, perhaps, he was the client he spoke of. No. They seemed very intent in their conversation. Has Master Zhu become interested in religious instruction? If so, you should warn him. The abbot is very enlightened, of course. He has a strong, what should I say, odor? <laughs> I was going to say personality. Management. <laughs> I'm afraid there are clothes of arms today. Oh, you are? Yes, pardon me, what clothes of arms today? I'll be on my way then. Yeah, thank you. Baha'i? How could I not have seen it? How is it possible? Susan's were a solemn oath to me. He said he would never listen to no monk again. How could he deceive me? Oh, mistress, people make vows all the time and just forget about them. That's just what they do. Besides, the old monk is so crafty and the master is so well. He is easily persuaded. <laughs> Three, all of us. It's clear, no one's one of us. 
come up to the temple. And you broke the storm? No, no, Brother Sue, your wife brought the storm. What? She's back against the high. My wife? Yes, Brother Sue, she conjured all of the water spirits, the crabs and the fishes of the sea, the seahorses and clams. My wife? Brother Sue, she's flooding the mountain. Oh, I'm so moved by this tender display of affection. <laughs> <laughs> I know you must have been on the outside world, but still, it was wrong to find a fortune to come up. Follow me, Brother Shoe.
Queenie is right. We must go. Go, Master Shu. And we'll return to where we came from as well. If that is your wish, then I will go. But listen to me first. I must have my say. Almost from the day we met, I was plagued by doubt. When I first came to the Red House in the West, I almost did not come in. And when Greenie proposed marriage between us, I again felt it was not right. Then the high came, and those doubts were reawakened. After the Dragon Boat Festival, I don't believe I was completely fooled by you and Greenie. But again, I allowed myself to ignore those feelings and be blinded by your true nature. Now, I've seen with my own eyes what you did for me at the Golden Monastery, and I have no doubt at all. You see, Mistress, I have no doubt that no man has ever been loved as I have been loved. I have no doubt that I know you as you truly are, and I have no doubt that you are, in fact, partly a snake, partly a spirit. And I must ask you to forgive me for ever doubting me at all. Am I dreaming? Whatever world is yours, I want that world. Please say you forgive me for my weakness and blindness that made you feel you had to hide and take me home, wherever that may be.
watching. Take care of the baby! Follow me, dwarf wolf! By all accounts, Fahai did what he said. He put Lady Bai underneath the Thunder Peak Pagoda and kept her there for a very long while indeed. But here, for the last time, our story forks like the branches of the willow at Broken Bridge. Some say that Dream Dragon, son of Lady Bai and Shu Shen, grew to be a great scholar. He came one day, knelt and prayed before Thunder Peak Pagoda, and this display of filial piety crumbled the pagoda, and so his mother was free. Others say nothing at all about the sun, but that it was someone else. Someone who quietly spent the next seven centuries studying upon a mountain, until at last her magic skills had grown unimaginably vast, almost as big as her heart. Elegant, graceful, patient, and kind, it was Greeny who came to free her. But what of Shu Shin? Not much is said. He sold the pharmacy and donated the money to the magistrate from whence it came. He went back to being an assistant, and living with his sister and brother-in-law, he did not remarry. On his days off, he walked by the Thunder Peak Pagoda and thought of her and of their brief, happy time together. But you must not feel sorry for Shu Shin. With enough time and distance, all forking paths must come to an end. In fact, they never forked at all. In the hour of death, when the heart uncoils, we can, at last, see that all ideas of separation, loss, difference, are nothing but illusion. We are treated and ushered home, back into the whole, by whatever image we most loved in our time on earth, which held us, whether we knew it or not, the symbol of divine reunion. There is no limit to what form this may be. A boy? A snake! A dog! The form of light itself. The wind in the trees. The way the grass looks when the sun is going down and all the rest.